YouTubies, this is Psychic Bob. It is so awesome to be with you. Well, welcome to Wiccan Wednesday. That's right, every Wednesday I put out a video uh, for the Wiccan community called Wiccan Wednesday. And if you're new to Wicca or curious about it, definitely be here every Wednesday. We're going to talk about Wiccan stuff. <laughs> I'm so glad you're here. Well, before we get into everything today, I wanted to give a big shout out to all of you who came out to my uh, recent videos. You know, earlier this week we had our Lamas video and I gave a tour of my altar. If you haven't seen that, you might want to check that out. I, I talk about the recent Sabbath, what it means, the history and how to set up an altar. And uh, back when I did that, I didn't have my Lamas bread ready yet but i've got my llamas bread it's been on my altar now the last two days and i thought i would show it to you here this is my big llamas loaf isn't that wonderful this is a big whole grain bread it's got i don't know like 10 different grains in it but it's absolutely lovely it's been on my altar here and i've really enjoyed having this bread uh this bread actually i picked it up if you guys are interested you might want to check your local supermarkets from a company called La Brea Bakery. There's their logo, La Brea. Really excellent breads. I'm a, I'm a big fan of them. I love their bread. I think it's wonderful. And I've been nibbling on this bread. Mmm, some kind of good. <laughs> well, anyways, thank you to all of you who came out for that video. If you haven't seen it, definitely check it out. Also, yesterday, excuse me, I've lost my voice today. <clears throat> yesterday, we had uh, messages from the spirit world. So if you haven't seen that video, definitely check that out as well, okay? Uh, I answered psychic questions for people who wrote in. So if you're new here, we got a lot happening at Spirit Channel. It's the place to be. Well, anyways, also, a lot of you have been writing to me. It says, Psyche Bob, we love your Wiccan shirts. In fact, today I'm wearing one of my Wiccan shirts. I have a number of these in different colors. And you can see I've got the big pentagram, and it says Wiccan down here at the bottom. And uh, a lot of you have said, Psyche Bob, we got to have that shirt. Where do you get it? Well, I actually buy a lot of my Wiccan stuff online. You want to go over to eBay. Uh, there's a store there called Red Ink Printing. I'll put the link below. Um, but they sell these. They have them in red, blue, green, gray, white, all different colors. Uh, some of them say Wiccan. Some just have pentagrams. Some have smaller pentagrams. Some have bigger. You know, you can find one. But definitely check out Red Ink Printing. They have a lot of Wiccan wear. That's where I get a lot of my clothes. Okay? So I think you'll like it. Uh, so here we are. Well, Wiccan Wednesday. Well, today we're doing a video. I got a request from one of my YouTubers, a wonderful young lady named Crystal Owl. Hi, Crystal. I want to give you a shout out here because you, did, you gave me a wonderful letter with a wonderful suggestion. Crystal wrote to me last week and she said, Thank you, Bob. Do you think for Wiccan Wednesday you could talk about the cone of power, the Wiccan cone of power? And I thought to myself, that's a really good idea because you don't often, <clears throat> excuse me guys, my voice is going to the, you don't often hear that talked about much on YouTube. Um, but the Wiccan Cone of Power is a traditional witch practice. And in the old days, when there were covens, uh, they would use the coven to raise, raise the Cone of Power. And uh, what would happen is witches would gather in a circle and they would start to chant. And then as they would chant, sometimes they would dance, they would start to run in a circle, spin their circle. And as they would do that, they would visualize light emanating up from the circle in a form of a cone. And at a certain point when the chanting would reach a frenzy, it all either drop to the ground um, and direct the power to the high priestess, and she would then release it into the universe. This was found to be a very powerful way to send magical power out to create change. Um, to give you kind of a visual 
of the cone of power, this is why we wear the witch hat. The witch hat is actually kind of a coded message. And all the witches who wear them know what it means. If you look at the brim of the witch hat, it's a circle. And this represents the circle that we cast when we hold ritual. And the cone is literally the cone of power that emanates up from the circle to a point. It's like becomes focused power and it's released. So the witch hat is actually a symbol of the witch's cone of power. So whenever you see a witch wearing a witch hat, they know what the cone of power is. Okay, so I would tell you, you know, if you forget what it is, just look at the witch hat. Let that be a reminder. That's kind of your mnemonic device so that you can remember what this is. Now, this raises the question. People will say, Bob, I'm a solitary. I don't have that coven. I can't do that cone of power. Oh, ho, listen, don't buy into that myth. Because really, every witch has the power to create their own cone of power. Now, it's true that group activity does tend to generate a little stronger charge. And so there is good reason to do that ritual with a circle, with a group. But don't let that stop you raising your cone of power. Because there are a lot of ways you can raise that cone of power. One of the ways to raise your cone of power is through your own chanting. Now, you know, when you cast your circle, um, you know, you want to visualize the power of that light forming around you. Having a strong circle is the first step to working with the cone of power. So let me put a picture up here of the luminous circle for you. So as you can see, you want to visualize as much as you can that tangible circle. And it's from that that you raise your power. Now, how do you raise power as a solitary? Well, one is that you chant. You can chant, you can dance in your circle, you can work yourself up to raise your power. And then at the height, you'll get a sense of timing about this. I've done, you release it to the universe and it'll go to fulfill its goal. Once you release that, then you just come down. Generally, after the cone of power is released, that kind of ends the circle, and then they'll have cakes and wine and rest or recharge. It does take a lot of energy when you work with the cone of power. But that being said, it's a very exhilarating and wonderful technique. Another way that you can raise power and create your own cone of power is through uh, for example, if you're doing cord magic, you know, like you might weave a cord. And so you could like weave elaborate knots. And as you weave your cord and do your knots, when you get to the end, you release it into the cone of power. So, you know, you want to think about the cone of power is energy that's built. Chanting, 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 release. Dancing is a wonderful way to raise the cone of power. I know I've danced in my circles and I get in a frenzy and whew, I release the power. It's an amazing, amazing way. Uh, another way to raise power is through um, creating power through a group effort, though you may be solitary. Now you're gonna say, about what are you talking about? How do you create group power as a solitary? Well, this is one of the secrets of the power of being a member of the Order of the Purple Cord. Uh, for those of you new here, you'll notice I'm wearing the cord. A lot of you know what this is. We have our own order that I've started. It's here at Spirit Channel, and well, it's not just at Spirit Channel, but we meet here a lot. Um, the Order of the Purple Cord is predominantly a group of solitaries, but we are a mystical order. And our mystical power comes from that, even though we're at a distance, we can combine our separate powers together to release a cone of power. 
as I hope to in the future, to do a group ritual, an online ritual. We're going to experiment with that. And so we will have people at different places chanting, joining, and even though we're at a distance, we'll meet up through teleconferencing and we will release that cone of power. Now you can still do that even before we get to a group event. For example, you could call me up, you could call Lady Angela up, you could call up one of your other friends and say, hey guys, I'm going to do a ritual on Friday night. Will you do the cone of power wherever you are? And each of us could do a solitary ritual. But the secret is we have to know what time you're doing it. We do our ritual at the exact same time. And together we make an effort to release the cone of power. And this way you have the group effort. And yet you can still be a solitary. It's an amazing and a mystical technique. And yet it will work. So I invite you to, you know, you know, maybe you want to get yourself a witch hat. Uh, even if you don't want to wear it, uh, not many witches wear them. Today. I wear mine, but, you know, I'm probably more of the exception. But, uh, you know, I wear mine outside of Halloween. But um, even so, get one as a symbol to keep near your altar or in your sacred space. Um, you know, I know people, what they've done is they've strung a thread through the top of the hat and they hang it from their ceiling. So their hat is kind of like a, a lantern hanging down. It's kind of neat. Um, so, you know, that can be your symbol of your cone of power. But this is one way, um, you know, by meditating on the witch hat that you can remember the concept of the cone of power. Now remember, see how the cone starts wide and it narrows at a point. And what that means is you want to take broad power and focus it because magic works like a laser beam. So we want to bring it down to its very point. That's right. And that way it hits its mark like an arrow. Now, just to make matters more complex, there's also the reverse of the cone of power. And you're going to say, Psychic Bob, what are you talking about? Well, as we can send power up through the cone, we can also invert it and draw power down through the cone. This is a wonderful technique, for example, when you're focusing on drawing down the moon. When a priest or priestess goes out and they draw down the moon, they're taking the power of the moon and they're channeling it down into their body. So you can also draw power down into you from the universe. And again, use the same power raising techniques. You chant, you dance, and you call it, rather than sending it out, you call it into you. Now, I would recommend, though, if you're going to call power into you, know very well what you're calling. Don't just do it as a whim, because it is powerful. And once that power is in you, then you can also direct it to, for example, if you're doing a healing poppet, you could draw down the power, i.e. inverted cone of power, uh, into your body and then channel it into a healing, you see? So this is a wonderful way. So the cone of power actually goes both ways. Now, you're going to say, well, Bob, when I try to do the cone of power, I visualize it as a blue cone of light. And you're going to say, well, I told my friend, but they said that the cone of power is always a white light. And another person will say, oh, no, the cone of power is always a purple light. Listen, the cone of power can be whatever color you want it to be. But what's important is that you understand its power and that you direct it. You can change the cone of power to different colors to suit your needs. Um, so if you wanted to, like, send healing to somebody, that a distance, you might send out that power in the form of green light, because that's traditionally healing color. Or if you're bringing it down into like a poppet on your altar, you know, let's say you want to bring it as a healing, you can bring it down as a green light. Or if you're working on a poppet, for example, that needs fire power, you could bring it down as a red light and focus it on the poppet for healing. So either way, whether it goes in or comes out, you know, the fact is, Know that energy, trust it, work with it, respect it. You know, it's kind of like people that are electricians. I've worked with electricians in the past. And electricians always say, you know, honor the electricity, honor the power. 
assume every wire is live and treated with respect. And you see that saves a lot of lives when you know that. And it's the same thing with the wick and cone of power. We want to honor that power. We want to respect it, treat it with respect. Anyways, guys, uh, maybe you have your own techniques. I'd love to hear. Tell me in the box below, have you ever used the cone of power? What is your energy raising technique, if you want to share it? Um, I myself do chanting a lot, and I'll burn candles, and I'll chant, and I'll raise that power. I like to dance, too. Many of you know I'm the dancing psychic, so that's another way. So anyways, a lot of ways to raise power. Um, actually, I got a letter from somebody also recently asking about sex magic. That's going to be a whole different video. But sexual energy can also be a form of raising power. Um, you know, so we'll talk about that in another video, but that is another traditional witch technique. So um, that's generally done with couples. It can be done solo. Um, you know, so there are a lot of ways to create the cone of power. But for right now, I'd get yourself a little witch hat, keep it near you, and be reminded that you have access to that cone of power. Well, guys, I'm so glad you're here. Listen, I hope you're having an awesome day. I uh, hope you all, you know, for those of you who've been wanting a shirt like mine, check out again Red Ink Printing. They're wonderful. Uh, you can find all sort of Wiccan wares. By the way, also speaking of all things Wiccan, you need to pop over to Lady Angela's website at rarewiccaspells.com. She has all the wonderful tools of the craft. She has altar supplies, candles. She's got, uh, you know, you name it, ritual stuff. She's got chalices. She's got athame. She's got pentacles. She's got jewelry. You know, I've got to buy all my jewelry over there. Um, and you can also, you know, register for the Order of the Purple Cord at her site as well. Either my site or her site. We'll get it either way. Anyways, I'll put links in below for all of that. I'm so glad you're here. Hope you'll like this favorite. Share it with your friends. Let's get the word out about Spirit Channel. Let's get the word out about the Order of the Purple Cord. I hope you guys rock. Listen, tell me in the box below if you want to. Share about your experiences in raising the cone of power. I'd love to hear it. Blessed be to all of you. Thanks for being here. We'll see you tomorrow is Zodiac Thursday. Be here for that. And of course, next Wednesday, we'll have another Wiccan Wednesday. Thank you, Crystal Al, for suggesting this. I love you. Blessings to you. We'll see you back here tomorrow.